Hi guys and welcome to your daily tarot reading for Sunday the 15th of August 2021. Thanks for joining me. I'm going to use three different sets of cards today. I'm going to use the Swiss Tarot cards, the Archangel Michael Oracle cards and the Dali Tarot. So I'm just going to pick one from each deck and then I'm going to combine the message and because I'm just picking one card I'm not going to spend time shuffling. I'm just going to see which card wants to come out. So we've got Jupiter, that's the fifth card in the Major Arcana, often known as the Hierophant. Then Archangel Michael. Let's see. Okay, so... Romance Angels are helping you. Okay. And finally, the Dali Tarot. The Queen of Swords. Okay. So the message I get just from looking at the cards as a unit is that it's important not to feel trapped and to be short-sighted in the sense that, okay, my life is a certain way. I've only got one or two or three options and that is the end of it. The Hierophant card is about institutions and structure, but Jupiter is about growth and limitless expansion. So this card says, don't let yourself be fooled into thinking that your life is small. Love is around you and it's not just love in a romantic sense, it's being in love with the process of your life. If you're in some sort of routine and you're really miserable in that routine and you've completely checked out, then life isn't going to feel loving. It's going to feel like you're just grinding along over and over and over again and you're paying your bills and you're sleeping and you're feeding your body and then you're working again and then you're sleeping and then you're paying your bills. It can feel like you just get into this rhythm, this thankless kind of grind and the love for the process goes out the window. And it's just like, wow, I'm starting to feel like a machine here. So the cards are reminding you that you're not a machine, that you have so many more options than you realize, and that being in love with yourself and life and other people and the world is really important. And it's the way to find back to yourself. So it's the way to get out of the institution, to get your power back, and then the Queen of Swords is your intellect and your ability to think clearly for yourself and to make really intense decisions which are going to change your world. This kind of Queen of Swords, she looks really um, frail almost and, and innocent, but then she's got this big sword and this red line. So when that comes down, that's a really heavy, powerful weapon that she's carrying. And again, it says... Don't judge a book by its cover. Just because someone here looks sweet and like they wouldn't harm a fly, you don't know what power really lies within. And we've got the butterfly here. So your ability to decide and to see things in your own unique way is completely transformative. And not only does it give you your power back, it changes the world. So if anything, you are the institution. You're the person who is responsible in the sense of the Hierophant, you make the rules because you are Jupiter. You are the thing that grows and expands effortlessly. You're big and, and unstoppable in a way. So it's important to kind of realize that you are not only as powerful as the forces around you, but you are the main power in your life that when you decide, everything else changes. So the fifth card in the Major Arcana, the Hierophant, sometimes it's belonging, sometimes it's trying to follow the rules, sometimes it's accepting repression and instructions for the sake of being part of something bigger. And it's very clever in the Swiss Tarot, actually, I never realized this, that they put Jupiter on the fifth because it's a really nice contrast within one card because Jupiter is so lucky and it's independent and it's expansive, it really is the antidote to the Hierophant. 
You can't be trapped and stuck in some sort of institution if you're constantly getting bigger and bigger and bigger. It's like putting a balloon in a tiny little room and continuing to expand that balloon. Eventually, something's going to pop. So it's the opportunity to break free of things that have held you back. And it's the decision or the recognition of things that hold you back. So you don't immediately need to deconstruct everything in your life but at least you become aware of the fact for example do you know what doing the 70 hour week in the job that i only took as a temporary solution really doesn't work for me anymore and something needs to give if i want to be in love with my life and if i want to be happy so you find the way to blow up some oppressive structure in your life and if you look at it as a positive in, in the sense that the Hierophant is a community you belong to, if you're Jupiter in that community, you get bigger and bigger, bigger. So the message is you've got something to contribute to that community. You're not just there to follow all the rules. You have something to add. We've got this eagle here. And if you go to um, a church or a, yeah, a church usually, a lot of the um, podiums where the, the the vicar or the priest, they, they give their um, sermon, the, the pedestal is often in the shape of the eagle. And it's because the, the, the symbolism behind that is the, the person speaking at that podium wants their message to reach the whole world. So an eagle with its wings is able to spread that message. So it's freedom in terms of your thinking and in terms of what you're trying to share. And you're not just a part of the process. You're not a, a wheel in a machine. Romance angels are helping you. My prayer, dear guardian angels of my soulmate, thank you for preparing my soulmate and me for love, for giving us the motivation to make healthful life changes and for arranging for us to meet. Thank you for helping us recognize each other and have the courage to say hello so that we can eventually delve into a truly intimate relationship. Lovely. Okay, so if you're being prepared to uh, meet your soulmate or something that you truly love and adore in life, and the angels are arranging for you to meet, then it's it, what's, what's implied is that you step out of your comfort zone, that you're going somewhere where you can meet your soulmate. So you're not just oppressed. You're following your own path in life. You're following your own mission. So again, that's I really feel that's the most important thing here, that... You're not stuck anywhere. You're not meant to feel overly, you know, like the day isn't supposed to be about, okay, this is the schedule. This is what you have to follow. The cards are saying, please do think for yourself. Insert what you want into the day. Step outside of your comfort zone. Be Jupiter. Expand effortlessly into different areas. That will bring you outside of this regular, familiar comfort and structure of your life. It'll take you somewhere new. And that in itself is romantic and loving because you're experiencing something new. But also with this prayer here, the angels are bringing you something or your, your guardians or your ancestors, your spirit guides. They're going to then bring you into a situation that feels loving, whether it's a new love, a person, something that makes you feel supported and loved. That's interesting, actually, because in yesterday's reading, we were also talking about love being really the safety net or the, the building blocks which enable you to do something differently. And today you're in love. You see the potential for love in the world, in your life. You blow up the things that restrict you and hold you back. Step out of your comfort zone and discover something new. And that then gives you real clarity on what you truly want, what decisions you're going to make for yourself, what institutions you're going to belong to in future, what rules you're going to follow, and what rules you decide you're going to implement for yourself and for other people in your life. So for instance, um, I have been in a situation where I'm always um, having to send a, a schedule so that I'm totally punctual and on time. Am I going to apply that insistence on punctuality in my own relationships or is that not so important to me? So if someone is half an hour late, do I get upset about it and see as, uh, as unacceptable? Or is that something that I see as normal? 
Like if I go for an appointment, being half an hour early or late is something that I accept. That's just an example. You know, it, it depends on you whether you're okay and relaxed with time or whether you're very on top of it and really intolerant of lateness, just as a silly example. But that's important to say, do you know what? These are my rules and I can implement these because I love my life, I love myself, and this is what I'm going to accept. So it's kind of like, I am going to be treated the way I want to be treated. Love to me has certain rules associated with it. So for instance, with the timing thing again, if you love me, then you respect me enough to be on time or if I'm in a relationship, I don't need to be I don't need to be on time and other people to be on time, for example, because I know they love me and we're all very laid back and we don't put pressure on one another. It's different for everybody. So you understand what's important to you, how you want your relationships to look. And that puts you in a position of power where you're really clear on what kind of circumstances and relationships and the type of love that actually supports you and helps you grow rather than makes you feel unloved or oppressed or you're not getting what you want. So it's really about being your true self, feeling the love, and then having that confidence to say, this is what works for me and these are my own rules for my life, for my interactions with other people. And therefore you become the authority figure in your own life. And because we have Jupiter here, that's lucky. So being decisive is lucky. And knowing yourself is lucky and opens things up for love. So that's really interesting. Okay, so um, this card, I'm going to count, because it's an oracle card, it's not really a tarot card. I'm going to count that as like a, like a court card, because we've got Michael here in the middle. So that's one. We've got another court card. That's another one. So one and one is two, which is a relationship in itself. And then we've got five, which is seven. Seven is the mind and creativity. So it's your mind which really gets you into a position of power because you're making sense of things and you're seeing them very clearly. And you can get creative about what you love, what the future of your love life looks like, what your process looks like. So a loving process, something that you enjoy. What does that look like? What are the rules? What are the structures of that process? And how can you put it into place so that it's something in your life consistently. So another really banal example, I'm not allowed to do a certain thing because of the culture I come from, but I love this certain thing. So it works for me, I'm, let's say playing croquet. I love playing croquet, so I'm going to do it anyway. And because I love it so much, I'm going to schedule two hours every Sunday morning so that I can play croquet, no matter what everyone else thinks. And that's really the process. And by doing that, you separate yourself from the people who say you can't play this sport because of whatever reason. And you say, that's fine for them. It's not fine for me though. I love this sport, so I'm going to do it. And I'm gonna make the decision for myself to build it into my life so I get consistent enjoyment from it. So you creatively make your own rules. And that's so, empowering and lovely and freeing. Love it. Have a wonderful day. If you would like a personal reading with me, please get in touch via my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page, click on book your reading to order your reading with me. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up, hit subscribe and share the video online. Have a fabulous day and I'll speak to you tomorrow.